Hey everybody, how's it going? I am Q at the Geek, and today we are jumping back into Shenzhen IO in real life with the review. We're going to go over the design we did about a year ago and take a look at it and reevaluate it and see how it looks today and what things we would change and move on from there. Um, I would probably consider that first version to be the initial prototype proof of concept and there'd be a lot of things that I would polish on it before I would consider that a finished market ready product. So let's jump into it and let's see how it looks. This video is brought to you by PCBWay, where you can get prototype circuit boards for $5 with a myriad of options for PCB assembly, flex circuits, and otherwise. PCBWay has you covered. Check out the link for more information in the video description below. Okay, so let's go ahead and familiarize ourselves with this a little bit since it has been a little while. Um, so first things that I'm noticing as I'm taking a look at this is that our LEDs up here are being run directly off of the pins for the microcontroller. And that's something that I wouldn't do. Um, again, anyway, the reason I did this initially is because it was cheap and uh, the pins themselves, I believe they're able to source about 20 to 50 milliamps. Um, if I'm remembering that one correctly. And when we designed this, we spec'd it out to be around that range. The problem is, as the coin cell that was powering this whole thing dies, the voltage that's going to be on that is going to be running off of this VCC voltage, and it's going to slowly drift down, which is going to make these LEDs dimmer as it goes. So uh, we're going to take a look at how I would design that today and, and for a more polished product. Um, especially to kind of ruggedize these LEDs so that they don't dim and look bad over time. The next thing that I see is that we were, are running a 16 megahertz resonator here. Now, if I do remember correctly, one of the things that I kind of saw after I was working through this is uh, when you're running the Arduino um, at Mega 328P off of 3.3 volts, you actually can't even run it at that 16 uh, megahertz that we put this on here. It gets down clock to 8 um, from the internal oscillator. And so that's something that I would probably just remove that and run with the 8. There's nothing with this project that makes it require uh, that full, you know, that, that full speed. It's the, the timing on these LEDs is non-critical, so it really doesn't matter. We could get by with just the internal oscillator. The reset switch and everything, that looks good to me. Uh, I wouldn't change anything there. The programming header, that looks fine. Uh, the input capacitor, I'm pretty sure all of these were from the open source schematic for the Arduino. Uh, so that is all pretty standard fare. Looking over here on our power, uh, we were running this off of a coin cell, which I would not do again. That was just not enough power, especially off of that little uh, CR2032. There's just not much that that thing has to supply. And if I were to consider doing this again, it would definitely have some different batteries with uh, a different chemistry on them. Um, I might go through and do a rechargeable lithium ion or a lithium polymer, but more likely what I would probably do is just some alkaline dry cells, do you know a couple of double A's. If I remember correctly, the battery capacity on those is somewhere in the range of about 2,400 milliamp hours. And I think if you run this through a simple switch mode power supply and keep it around that range of that three volts, just boost it up to 3.3, drive it off those LEDs. As they die down, they're gonna just go back through that regulator and boost up. And you're gonna have that thing be pretty efficient for just running a couple of LEDs. And remember the purpose of this is a fake security camera that is supposed to kind of ward off people. So you really don't wanna have to be changing the batteries too often on this. You don't want to have to worry about plugging it in or anything, you know, trying to wire to something that doesn't even do anything. So I'd probably just do a couple of uh, alkaline cells and call it good. So let's take a look over here real quick and let's see what things I would change. Okay, so the first thing that I would change is I would go through and modify how the driver circuit is set up currently for the LEDs. So right now what they look like is they look something like this. There's a the power rail here and that's VBAT and that's going to then go through the LED which then goes through a resistor and that then feeds into the microcontroller uh, which is internally toggled to ground which is what drives that and controls it. The 
FETs that are in here can only handle um, a small amount of amperage through them though. So you don't really want to do that because there's some different things that go along with this, um, but it's not a very good situation. You can damage your microcontroller. Um, and also just running it off the battery voltage, what that's going to do is as the, uh, the battery power kind of drifts over time and starts to die down like this, um, that LED is just going to get more and more dim. And that was one of the things that we actually saw with the prototype. So what I would do instead is uh, something like this, where uh, instead of going that whole direction, I would have um, a regulated voltage, and we'll call that VREG right now, and then do something very similar where we're just coming through the LED, still going through our resistor, but then we're going to put an NMOS uh, FET in here and have that go through and drive to ground, and this guy is going to come off to the microcontroller. So now what this does is it actually does a little bit to isolate um, the power that's running through this from the microcontroller because you're actually just putting a voltage on this and it's driving the circuit. There's no current really running through this and so you run no risk of damaging your micro and now using a regulated voltage you will have a constant on that uh, LED until the system does a brownout. So basically when the voltage drops too low for the microcontroller to even run uh, or the voltage regulator to run, then you'll have an issue. So uh, let's look at that for the next step and see what that will look like. So now looking here on the side of a power solution for this. So as I talked about looking at a couple of dry cells, um, let's start off over here and we're going to throw in a battery pack. And that's just going to be um, a couple of triple A's or of double A's, excuse me. Um, we'll just have two double A's right here. Have this guy go to ground. And then this is going to actually run through a switch mode power supply. And the way that this simple supply is set up, it will just have um, an input capacitor. This is actually about 2.2 microfarads based off of the the part that I'm using, or that I would be using. Uh, it's a part that I've used recently, and uh, it works really well for, for this. Uh, it's a little boost switching power supply, so it will take the voltage that's here. Um, this will be about 3 volts because each dry cell is 1.5. Um, its max voltage is about 1.65, so that will give you about 3.3 volts at the start. Um, and then as it starts to normalize and die down, then you're going to be dropping to 3 volts and below. So then we have this inductor here. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is a 2.2 uh, micro Henry. And then this goes into our actual switch mode power supply, which also has a grounding point on it. And then just the output. So you put another buffer cap here. This one has a larger cap um, to stabilize the circuit, and this is a 22 microfarad. And then just off of here, you have your 3.3 volts that gets regulated out. So that's a pretty basic and simple circuit. You can do some other things where you could put in uh, a MOSFET, a PMOS, actually, instead of an NMOS, but a PMOS. You could put on here between the battery and uh, the first cap, and then you can actually toggle that off and on with our application, I don't really see that being important and useful because we're going to be blinking the LEDs fairly constantly, but for short periods of time. So I would just leave this turned on and have it hardwired. And that would be good. There's there's really not much else that I would uh, modify other than this, this big 10 microfarad. That one I would pop off uh, because you do have a 22 micro coming off. It does depend on how you decide to power the whole thing. I'd probably run the entire power for this off of that, um, but you can really easily just run it off the battery supply, keep this kind of thing in place. Um, I would probably, I might drop out this 10 micro and just put in a one micro because you really shouldn't need that much. Um, there is a point where the battery is acting as a giant capacitor anyway. So I'd probably remove this larger piece because that is a little bit more expensive since it is a tantalum polarized cap. Um, and just put in a one microfarad ceramic and replace this with a you know a, a double a battery pack and 
you know, you could run the power from the or for the microcontroller off of the battery and just change this over to VBAT. And then from that other design with the MOSFETs, uh, you could just run the switch mode power supply uh, through the LEDs alone since they're really the big current draw. Now, uh, let's go ahead and take a look over at the layout really quick and examine that for a second. I mean, as far as the layout goes, I, I still really do like how this one came out. Um, it was very clean and simple. The, these lines just kind of traced around nicely. It all just kind of worked. Um, there might be a few things that I would change uh, just kind of along the spacing with this. Like I said, I would probably remove this entire resonator and that reduces uh, some of the issues you've got here. Uh, the reason that we had this little dangly was because the resonator was kind of in the way. So you remove that resonator and just pull that guy up and make sure it can connect into the ground pour and you're good to go. So this, this is our tantalum cap. So that should be able to reduce down in size. You should be able to get that in the same uh, footprint with a ceramic. You know, these will both be ceramics and put them at the, you know, this being uh, one microfarad, this being the 0.1 microfarad, you'd be just fine. Um, you would have some additional stuff you'd have to do, like I said, with putting in the FETs and those can go really just right by the LEDs themselves. That's not a big deal. So this part of the layout really wouldn't change that much. And as far as the, the power supply, I mean, so the, you know, the battery here on the bottom, that would be something that, uh, I would, I would be changing that over just some, some, uh, through hole, some pin headers, you know, just a you know, one by two of, of these pin headers and just solder the battery leads in. Um, you can also go through and design or well, get a battery pack that you could socket right onto the board and just have some holes in it. Uh, that's something you could do as well. And then there's plenty of space in here to throw in uh, the switch mode power supply, which in this case, I, I would probably see if I could find some space for it in the middle here. I think there's a, a good deal of space right there to be able to fit it. And that way you'd be able to have that that power that you need, which is only for these LEDs uh, in that redesign. And you just have a, that power right here on this side of the board, and that would make it pretty clean. And all you have is the control lines coming off. So I think if I were to redo this and uh, you know bump it up to a version, it probably would go, I'd call that a major revision, um, and bump it up to a version 2.0. I would go through and do those things and, and add that in. And maybe at another time I can, uh, reevaluate and actually do that. But uh, right now I just kind of wanted to look back over it, kind of give it some fresh eyes after a long time and see how it would look now and and how I would change it. Like I said, I think this was a really good design to get a preliminary idea. Um, as far as the enclosure goes, that's probably something that, like I said before, I would pass off to a mechanical engineer and just let them take care of because I'm definitely not a mechanical engineer. I just I like to, to tinker and to dabble, but that's about it. So I think that's about where I would call it with this. I mean, this is a, a pretty short design review, but um, everything, I, I'm pretty happy with how it did come out. Um, and like I said, as a proof of concept, it's, it's decent and it does what it's supposed to do. The only place that I would have a uh, desire to change anything would be, like I said before, um, those previous changes of putting some MOSFETs in and putting on a switch mode power supply and a different battery pack. But otherwise, I, you know, we set out to do what we wanted to do. Uh, I could probably get an even smaller microcontroller. We didn't need to use the Arduino. Um, there's tons of them that are out there that are actually, you could probably get a little cheaper for the, the chips that you could run this whole thing. And since we're really only talking about controlling two LEDs, uh, there's some small eight pin chips that you could easily run the, you know, they only have a handful of GPIO, um, but you could easily run the entire project since it's really only two LEDs. And you could do that pretty quick and pretty easy. So I think as far as it goes, there's definitely some room for improvement here. And as a, a one-off with trying to make it quick and cheap and uh, functional, this was a good way to go, but I would definitely improve on this and I would definitely change some of the aspects of the design to, again, just kind of more ruggedize it to uh, have it less susceptible to these brownouts and these different things. Because as this battery starts to drain, you're going to have the microcontroller resetting and some different things as it drops below the value that uh, this needs to be able to run. 
And again, the major issue here is that there just wasn't enough power on these LEDs to really, you know, make them shine and make you know that it's there. Uh, they were turning on definitely. And if you were in a dark room and you saw that, then yeah, you, you know, you'd see them and you'd think there'd be something going on. Uh, and so maybe it would distract somebody at night, but otherwise, uh, I just, I, I think this needs to be improved. And I think that's, like I said, those are the things that I would change to do that. So that was it, everybody. That was Shenzhen IO, the review. Um, I hope you like that. I hope you learned something from it. Maybe saw some of the things that I did. What would you change? You know, what, what were some of the things that you probably, when you were watching this go, Oh, why would you do that? That's just stupid. Uh, what would, what would you change with this design? I want to know your feedback. So go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section below. Otherwise, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this around to your friends, those who you think might be interested in uh, my work. And let me know what kind of things you want to see next. I've got some plans to continue on with the Professional KiCad series and to show some things off like how to do spice simulation and how to do footprint design and some different things. But let me know what you want to see next. I've got a feeling I'm going to have a good deal of free time coming up here in a little bit. So let's uh, see what else we can do. But until then... We'll see you in the next one.